Hello and welcome everyone. Today uh, we're talking to Florian from Be Cool and specifically today we are going to be talking about repricing which is a very very important part of um, selling on Amazon and Florian's company Be Cool has a specific repricing tool so we're going to be talking about the best practices in repricing that, that Be Cool has seen throughout the many customers they have and also about how the Be Cool tool can help with repricing. So I think first off, we're going to start off with a really basic question, Florian, what is repricing? Hi, hi, Trevor. Very nice talking to you again in these uh, new videos. For the one who don't know me, my name is Florian. I'm French and I'm responsible of Be Cool Europe. So just a few words about Be Cool for the one who don't know yet uh, our company. We have been in the Amazon repricing business for uh, more than 10 years now. So we are pioneer in this industry. And the company was created by Amazon sellers and for Amazon sellers. So we develop software based on the historical data that we have collected through all these years. And this is how we, we could create such intelligent repricer. So to reply your questions, what is repricer? I mean, what is repricing actually? So price on Amazon um, are frequently changed and unless you own your private label or custom made product, you need to maintain your listing prices repeatedly in order to stay in the competitions. Every seller's goal on Amazon is to make as many sales as possible by getting as many buy box as possible. There are so many factors that influence a customer to purchase your product and the price is one of them crucial if you want to make good sales. Price is too high, your product might not uh, interest customers. Price is too low and you won't make any profit. Uh, actually, you will even lose money, right? So, so easy to do. Yeah, so how do you choose the perfect price uh, for your products? This, um, actually, there is a no one size fit all strategy. Uh, the right price largely comes down to your product's quality, uh, your sourcing cost, your competitive environment, and what customers are looking for. Definitely, this is all the factors that you have to think about. So, so what are the, okay, so you're a, a seller, you've got, um, you know, you're, you're selling on a product which has a number of other sellers. So there's a, you know, say five or five or six sellers. Um, you are interested in increasing your buy box percentage um, and, and making more sales. What are the, the most important factors you need to look at? Uh, well, I think uh, you have, let's say, five different factors. The first one is to correctly set up your mean and max price. Why? Because let's say if you set up your mean price on your repricer and your mean price is actually higher than the buy box price. So when using a repricer, the price, the repricer will never go below your mean it will always stop at your mean price. But if the buy box is under your mean price, you will not be able to fight for the buy box. If you don't have the buy I box... For, I think yes. we perhaps should actually just explain some, some uh, basic concepts here. So if you have a, you're a seller, uh, if you go to the product listing page, there'll be a number of sellers and you can obviously change the price and how you change the price will determine the order that you appear in that ranked list of sellers. Now, obviously there's one of those sellers with the top seller is the seller that gets the buy box and that's the, effectively the, the featured offer, the default selling option. So with a tool like Be Cool, what you do is you also, you dynamically change your price between a min and a max that you, a minimum and a maximum price you set. And you say, okay, I'm willing to change my price to try and be the most competitive and I won't go above my max price and I won't go below my min price. There you go. Carry that's on, Florian. That, exactly, I mean, that's right. And as you said, you set up your mean and max price. And as I was, I was explaining, those are the gates. This is very important. If you set up your mean price too high, you won't compete for the buy box. If you set up your mean price too low, then you will lose money. And it's the same for the max price. You have to set up your max price correctly. Too high, you might be delisted from Amazon. Too low, you might lose money and lose profit. So. The first factors, the first factor is correct. Uh, you mean and max correctly set up. You mean and max price. Okay. Then the second one I said is the competitions. 
What I mean by that is you have to think about how many other sellers should be selling your product. Usually we say that we stop at 15. More than 15 other offers on this asset would be too many. The competition would be too fierce. And then so you, you think might... you shouldn't sell a product which has 15 sell it more than more than yes. 10 I, sellers. I, okay. Yes. Uh, 10 is the best, 15 is the max. So okay. this is That's something you have, this is something you have to check. Another one is, of course, conduct a good product research when you sell on Amazon. So you could uh, use tools for that to help you search for the right products. Like uh, at Bicool, we get uh, Big Central. So this is a product research tool that you can use, for example. And the product research is very important. So you can set up many criteria when searching for products. How many reviews on these products? How many other sellers, such as what I was just explaining? Mm -hmm. uh, the price of the products, maybe not too high price or not too low. If the price is under $10, then you're not going to do a lot of uh, sales. So this is very important, product research. But this is actually a big thing to do. And maybe in the new videos, we can uh, talk about yes. that further. Okay. And then sourcing. Sourcing is very important. When you find the right products to sell, definitely you have to source it well. Because if you spend too much money on, the, on buying the products, then your cost will be too high. What does it mean? It means like your price, your mean price will be too high as well. So mm -hmm. sourcing is important. And the last, the last thing I would say, the fact is, is don't try to be the cheapest seller. It's not because the, you are the cheapest, then you will, have, you will have more sales. It's not, it doesn't come only on the price. Right, so what are the, okay, so I've got some questions for you. Um, yes. In terms of, okay, so obviously price is a big factor. Now, mm. is it, is it enough just to be a little bit cheaper, like say just one pence cheaper? Does that make a difference, or do you have to be a certain percentage cheaper or a certain amount cheaper? What have you What have you seen? Well, um, that's a good question. Many people ask us this, so it depends. It depends. This is actually it depends of your competition. Let's say you are fighting against another seller. This seller is also doing FBA, uh, yeah. same same as you. So you're both doing FBA, and so you're selling the same product, FBA as well, but it will depend on other metrics. If maybe this seller uh, has the same numbers of review and the same score as you. So definitely then you are all the same. You say the same, same product, both FBA, same number of yeah. review, same rank. So then if you price a penny under, it might be sufficient. Then you will. Okay, so you all will. other things being equal, it just it's it's okay just to be a tiny bit cheaper. That's right. But you can be maybe five dollars cheaper than other another competitors. But maybe you have only two reviews and he has two thousand reviews. Okay. And so then, so that's why it depends on the metrics, right? Okay. If, so how? That's the next question. How important are your metrics, and which metrics are important? Uh, I would say <laughs> that. It depends again. This is they are equal, equally important. You don't build a pricing strategy uh, on one seller only. This is important. Yeah. It, so you have to check overall. And definitely, if you have to base your pricing strategy with uh, compared to one seller, definitely you should be the one who has a buy box. You check nice. the one who has a buy box, and then according to his uh, profile, then you can manage your price to, but, but to say it's say okay so it's obviously things there's like feedback there's uh late delivery rates there's you know order defect rate is it just important to keep a good score across all of these metrics yes um, or is it either um, but that's good customer service anyway yes very but important that, uh, every that, everything is important actually like i said it's they are all <laughs> equally important uh, that's why it, it might be hard. Some some people might might feel like it's hard to sell on Amazon, but this is very important to keep everything good, right? Get good feedbacks, good reviews, and also the shipping is very important. Try to okay. lower the, so how many days you ship. Okay, so right, so the the number of days, the the lag time for the the, the shipping, your handling time is important. Yes, it's very um, very important. It's also depend if you sell FBA and FBM, of course. FBA, okay, so you will have the advantage because Amazon will sell and send your products. FBM, you will have to take care of the shipping. So okay. you have to so make FBA it in three days. 
So FBA gets gets higher ranking than FBM. What about SFP? Uh, it would be pretty much the same. Uh, As FBA. It would be much, yeah, it would be pretty much okay. the same. I think it would be, yeah. Okay, so we've covered so we've covered the price, we've covered the fulfillment method, we've covered the uh, the metrics. What about um, is there any other any other pricing well, factors that we need to? Um, something I would like to mention about the price, since we are talking about the price right now, uh, you have many sellers. They are they tend to use a repricer, but then they are afraid because they they think it will just be a race to the bottom. Yeah. So. This is very important to notice uh, because there is a myth going around that repricer can create a price plunge to zero. And this is simply <laughs> not, can. Yeah, this is simply not accurate. Uh, mainly people have these views for two reasons. The first reason is they are using the free Amazon repricer from the seller central. Yeah. So this one does not repress up. It can only reduce the price. So mm -hmm. Keep in mind, uh, any tools provided by Amazon is buyer centric, not seller centric. Yes. Um, Why repressing down? Then you have cheaper price. Buyers uh, will have better price, and they will purchase more on Amazon, so more money for yeah. Amazon. I mean, and I found this, that. Um, yes. So I was going to say that I found the Amazon, um, the Dean House Amazon tool. If you've got what we do in my retail company, is if we're trying to liquidate stock. Um, we don't. We just create it directly on Amazon, and then we use the Amazon repricing tool because it's just it's easy to do. Whereas we want to, uh, in some under some circumstances, it's quite it's quite easy to use. Whereas yeah, um, th that's right. I, I will always recommend to use a repricer still because yes, I, think I think the so. one the one from Sir Central is really doesn't fit uh, really you need. But if you're just trying to get rid of something, I think it's quite good. There you go. We'll leave that's it right. That. Yeah, that's right. Leave it like that. <laughs> And um, also the second, the second reason is because uh, people don't, they don't know how to set up a repricer. Let's say they yeah. want to use a repricer, then they start to use it, but they don't know how to sell it up because it might be uh, intimidating at first. Uh, but don't worry, because at Bcore, we have developed a new repricer that can be set up in actually less than, less than five minutes. Okay. And, well, and perhaps per in a minute, perform I... as, as uh, good as the others, even better. Okay, I've got an idea. Let me just answer. I think we should look at that in a minute. I'll just see if I've got any. There's a few more questions that I want to ask you. Um, yes. Is the in terms of the shipping cost, right? Mm. Is it important to have a? The, firstly, does does the repr the repricing take into account the shipping cost? So it takes the the so-called landed price. Yes, yeah, uh, it will depend then if you do FBA or FBM. Well, our FBA so, is free shipping, but uh, that, if you're that's not right. doing FBA. That's then, right. So if you are doing, if you are selling FBM, then you have the shipping cost. Uh, those yes. costs can be, those costs can be included in your price, and then the shipping fees would be zero. So yes, it can be appealing for some sellers. Uh, you will see that they will see that shipping is zero, but uh, obviously your selling price will be higher. So yeah. it will depend on um, your strategies, and also it would depend. I think in my opinion, on other sellers. If you are on a, uh, on a certain asset, then all your competitors include the shipping price into their price. You shouldn't be the one who exclude the shipping price. You should yeah. do as the others. And on the contrary, if they are all, if no one include the price, the shipping price, then definitely you should tag along and do the same as them. So it would depend on your competitions, definitely. Yeah. Because I found, I mean, what we do is, obviously, my, my retail business, we sell in the UK, our domestic market, and that's free shipping that we sell in, internationally, including to France. So we wouldn't yeah. charge any shipping in the UK. So we you, include, charge... you include the shipping price? Yeah, so it, in... yeah we include okay. the shipping, you know, free shipping okay. in the UK. But when we sell internationally, we would, uh, it would be extra shipping. And you do so that because question... you think the price would be too high? Well, it's just difficult to do. Uh, it's difficult to manage the, you know, the, the international countries are incremental sales, right? All right, I see. So we're just listing the products in this different mm. countries to get incremental sales. And the shipping to France is much more expensive, especially, especially after Brexit. Yes. So we, it's, it's, it's easier to, um, to include it. No, sorry, to All have right. it as an extra shipping. But then when we do the repricing, we reprice against, we include the, the shipping in the price when we do the repricing. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Works that well sense. so far. 
<laughs> That's a trick. Um, okay, I think, I think, wait a minute. Let I us, mean, can we, I think we've, we've covered the best practice, unless you've got any other best practice. Um, have you got any best practice you'd like to share with us, which I haven't uh, covered? Yes. All right. So I just mentioned before something about the AI repressor that we have. I yes. think for some of you, you viewers, they don't understand the two difference between the rule-based repressor and the AI repressor. So let me very briefly maybe uh, show you the differences. Okay. So I'm, ju I'm just going to share my screen uh, right now. All right. So uh, the thing is, so get two different kind of repressor. Let's take a look at some of the main differences. A rule-based repricer gives uh, the sellers full control to change prices in response to his competitors. So it requires sellers to manually set up rule-based on different scenarios. So you can also, uh, you also have the list, the factors to tell the repricers how you want to reprice against competitors. So the good things will be like, it's good because it allows you to have a full control of your price change, but mm -hmm. uh, the inconvenience could be like the setup process is time consuming and can be complicated. The market is constantly changing. So you will need to monitor the market all the time. You have to check on daily basis too, as well. So this is about rule based and about the other one I was talking about, the AI repricing. So an AI repricer is a much more intelligent uh, tool and set the best possible price according to all market conditions. So mm -hmm. it will analyze the market trends to determine the price to be, uh, I mean, it will analyze the price according to many metrics. So Bcore AI algorithm got machine learning. Our, our repricer got a machine learning. It means that it will predict price trends it will analyze mm -hmm. the market and predict by itself the price trends so the advantage like i said is the setup is very simple like less than five minutes so this is a huge advantage like most of the people uh, struggle to set up their price so you would set it like a min at a max price and that would be it basically exactly you actually download the software it will upload all your assets from your seller central you set up min and max price, and then you let the repricer do the work. He will do the okay. work for you. That is very attractive because I mean, I my experience with reprices is some of them have a huge number of rules, and it's yes. really it's really difficult to know how to set them because you don't have enough data to really yeah. understand what works and what doesn't work. That's right. I mean, if you want, if you are an expert on the market and if you have time to spend, then rule based repricer will be good. But definitely for most of the people. AI repricer is the solution they were looking for. And also it's very intelligent. It will check the metric on daily daily basis. So it can also accelerate the buy box win rate that you have. We okay. have we so we launched these AI features about a month ago, and the results so far are amazing. Uh, we get some sellers, they increase the buy box win rate percentage by 20 to 30 percent. So of course. You increase your buy box win rate, you increase your sales, right? It goes, it goes in. So this is the difference, uh, the main difference between a rule-based repricer and an AI repricer. So uh, then you, the question was about the best, uh, because it's actually linked link to what I just said, the best yeah. uh, practice, right? So like I just explained, uh, for us, we launched this, this new AI repricer. So the best practice is how to, they're hard to list because you, you have, you have many and it will depend on the product you sell, the competitions of the market in general. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've been uh, in the repricer business for a long time, right? So we know the seller's pain point, and this is why we developed this AI repricer. So for the viewers. Uh, might be interesting to use this AI. They might uh, want to know a little bit more and how does it work? So I can I can take like two minutes and maybe just go into the three different uh, roles. Let's let's yeah. please please proceed. All right, perfect. This is the three different roles that we have. Okay, so we get the intense rule. So intense competition, moderate competitions, and low competitions. I will go this through. But you have to keep in mind that uh, always try to use these rules, use a repricer when you have less than 20 competitions. 
on the market. Right. Otherwise, it would be too saturated. And so how would you find out the number of competitors you have? Is that through your the big central tool? Oh, yeah, definitely. You or get it you on the big central tool. Or can you uh, Both of them. Both of them. You can find this information in both of them. When you use the big central, it will be more in order to plan what product you're going to sell. So you can check how many sellers and make a decision. Are you going to sell it or not? Are you going to buy it or not? And on the repricer, then definitely you have these information with all your competitors. You have the list of your competitors, competitive price, fulfillment type, uh, shipping reviews and everything. All right, let's just go quickly into these three rules. So we have the first one, which is uh, the intense competitions. So this is more sales volume oriented. So it also keep the profit margin uh, in mind. It can be used to maximize uh, sales and, of course, get the buy box. So this one is more is suitable if there are over 15 uh, sellers, so 15 to 20, and if most of them are FBM sellers. You know, before you mentioned that sometimes you need to you have too much stock and you need to liquidate your stocks, right? Yeah. And that's why uh, I said you can use this, the one from the Seller Central, but also you can use ours and check this rule because you can, with using this one, like intense competitions, you will liquidate your stocks very fast. So this is something uh, you can do with this rule. And also if you have Amazon competing with you, because if you have mm -hmm. Amazon competing with you, it would be, you know, Amazon is a very tough competitor to have on your listing. So definitely, this is the one you can use in that case. The second one, it's the moderate competitions. So the second scenario is more balanced approach when, uh, when you are less uh, aggressive and it would share the buy box uh, in favor of profit. So this is, more, this is ideal for quick sales with the possibility of selling higher than the buy box sometimes. And mm -hmm. of course, then you have better profit. So if you're not in a rush to sell, you might be able to choose this one. And this is better. Uh, this one is better when you have 10 to 15 sellers. And doesn't matter for this one, doesn't matter FBA or FBM. You can, can be both. Both of the competitions can be okay. And finally, you get the third one. The third one is, so the low competition one. So this is suitable for products that you have a few stocks left and there is uh, not a lot of competition on this one. So usually this applies to the scenario when there are less than five sellers, actually. Mm -hmm. So, and then you will be able to use this one. Um, usually it's more suitable for high ticket items with constant uh, prices. The main goal is to maximize uh, the profits with this one. So this is why we say low competitions, low offers on this one. So the AI will always incrementally lower the price from your max price to the buy box and then raise the price uh, aggressively when it capture the buy box. Overall, okay. this is what you have to keep in mind. When you use the, the, buy, the, the AI, the AI will learn from, from your competitors for maybe one day and then it will find the right price to get the buy box. On uh, the contrary of other uh, reprice on the market, when you catch a buy price, you will not stay here. Your price will keep increasing. Right. All right. Um, maybe like, I'll just show you one example and maybe I'm done with that then. This is an example of one of, so this is an example of one of our compete, one of our clients, sorry, is using our AI. So you can see my screen now. This is the price report history. So what, it, what, what is that? It's just the price change that the repricer did. And as you can see, okay. you can see in green, this is when the price went up. And in red is when the price went so it's going up and down by small amounts. That's right. So this is, uh, this is at the beginning when the, so this client, our users started to use the AI. So you can see it went a bit down and up. So the AI was trying to find the right price. And then look at this one. You see only green, okay, right? So then go, right? You see only green because as soon as the AI find the right price, again, it's a machine learning, right? It would take maybe one or two days to learn the market. 
And as soon as it knows the market very well, then this will happen. Your price will keep increasing. And this is why I was saying this, thanks to this repricer, with, thanks to our AI, the price will increase, your profit will increase, and you, will, you don't have to do anything special. Again, you just set it up in five minutes and let it go. It will do okay. the job for you. So definitely, again, it goes back to what we said before. It's definitely not just a race to the bottom. You can see right here on my screen. We, mm -hmm. we raise your price up. So how, many, how many sellers would there be of this product? On that product specifically? You are um, just as an idea. How many? Uh, what, maybe I, I think it would be 10, if I remember Okay, well. so quite a few. Oh, quite a quite few, a few sellers. Definitely, definitely. So then the price will go up. And this is, again, it goes back to what I was saying before. Set up your min and max correctly because the price will keep going up. So if you, if you set your max price too low, then the repressor won't be able to go higher than this. And maybe it will be able to go higher, right? It will mm -hmm. want to go higher. So you have to set up your mean and max correctly. This is, this is very important, very important. Okay. I found that it's around the time of uh, the first COVID um, uh, lockdown, when prices went really high, we got yes. the situation where for the first time ever, the price we were using was hitting the max price. And it was just, things were selling for ridiculous amounts of money. <laughs> you know, there was bit, people were complaining because they were just pressing buy. And anyway. yes, I see. Great. Okay. Well, fine. That's been, um, thank you very much for, for sharing your best practice to do with uh, repricing. And I think you have a, a special offer for our, our watchers. Yeah. And thanks, Trevor. Thanks for your time. It's really a pleasure. We always want to explain how a repricer can help uh, Amazon sellers to have better selling performances. So definitely come and try it. And for you viewers, everyone who watch, watch this video, you will have special discount, exclusive offers, thanks to Trevor. So Trevor, just uh, please put the description on the description, put your a link uh, that can uh, all the viewers can just click in to get access to Bcore. Yes, read the, look and, at the, uh, the video description. Yes, and then of course, we're going to give you exclusive discount. You can give all the details on that uh, on the video. No worries. Okay, great. Florian, thank you very much. We'll speak You're to you welcome. again soon. Talk to you again soon, Trevor. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.